sins are gone, not being sin. Second yes. Corinthians chapter 10. Three different passages this morning we'd like to read. Second Corinthians chapter 10, Ephesians chapter 6, then John chapter 19. A couple of verses here this morning, give you a few thoughts. Our mind and our heart is full. I enjoy getting to have an opportunity to come to church. I enjoy that I don't just have that opportunity, but I exercise that opportunity and show up. Everybody has that opportunity until this time. And I'm glad you exercised your <coughs> privilege today in the house of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4 to start with. It says, For we walk, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I believe we sometimes fail to remember that we're all in a war. This being Memorial Day, we honor those that have fallen in wars and battles. And I'm looking at people this morning that have not fallen, maybe completely, maybe fallen in the past and gotten up, wounded, what have you. It's not been in the same kind of battle. It's not been in the battles of foreign soil where even though some of you served and some of you went there, you didn't fall in that battle. The biggest battles that are being fought right now are what's waging within. What's waging, waging within our minds and within our hearts, in our lives and the things we deal with. I thought a lot of times we want peace and we seek for peace, but yet we don't call on the Prince of Peace. There's something that we all desire and that is freedom. We desire that. I, I appreciate what Mickey sung there a while ago. I've been set free. My sins are gone. Yes. And I'm thankful for that. In John chapter 19, verse 30, these being the last words of Jesus when he died on the cross, says simply this, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. We'll tie all these in in just a moment. We want you to listen carefully today. And I believe with all my heart that there'll be help for you if you'll listen. All right? Let's pray. Father, I come just now. How you bore my heart. How great is your love to me. How great. Cannot even measure how much you love us today. How about you love me? Lord, it's not just a group thing. It's an individual thing. I'm glad you love me. And I appreciate it this morning. Help me never forget it. Help me never to take it for granted. Then, dear Lord, I thank you for the sweet uh, time that you give us in the house of God. Help us never to take that for granted as well. Our people, our friends, our families, our church family, those that's visiting, God, we ask you to Give them a special blessing and thank you for letting us have this day. Lord, I understand my weakness and my unworthiness. Lord, I'm in need physically, mentally, spiritually, in every way, God, I'm in need this morning. And if you would, I ask that you would help me, cleanse me, give me power, give me that special touch that I need right now that I might preach to please you today. May I preach for you and for our people. Help me not to be guilty of preaching at anybody, but help me to preach for or to and direct the message that you have given us today. Lord, we cannot do it by ourselves. Lord, I know I cannot preach by myself, and these dear people can't listen by themselves. We need your help. And I ask you if you would right now, touch me special if you would. Give me power, I pray. 
In Jesus' name, amen. I want to look at this day. Now, this is Memorial Day Sunday, and I suppose for many years it's been a custom that the <coughs> services around Memorial Day be uh, concentrated a lot of times on, on the occasion of the day. As a patriot, as an American this morning, I can stand proudly with humble heart, with thankful heart, with a, even a hurting heart, I can stand thankfully to those who died that I could stand here today. That we could stand in front of this flag, that we could stand and assemble in the church house. I don't know that uh, there's any greater privilege than we have in our country in a free country. I always enjoy watching the motorcycles go through the past years that they went through for the race toward the wall. And I've always wanted to go to the wall at, uh, in Washington to see the, uh, all the names there and to see all that just because of sacrifices. I visited some of the World War II and Korean War uh, memorials. And a lot of the rest areas have them in them uh, here in our state. And I always go and read the names. I like to go through the cemetery and see the little flags that started back during the Civil War when uh, they would go visit the dead of the North and the South and they would put little flags in. 1868, they put the little flags on all the graves of the soldiers that died where all this started. Decoration Day is what it used to be called. And uh, we don't ever want to take this for granted today. Let's not take our country for granted. Let's not for, uh, take uh, our freedom for granted today. But that's not what we want to preach on this morning. We want to look at something entirely different. See, as a, as a patriot, as a free American, I can stand and, and tell you how great it is to honor your country. But I'm more than that. I'm a preacher. So my honor is split. My honor is given to our country and glad it's here, but my greater honor is to lift up the Lord Jesus today. To show you that I'm not going to Look at one that is dead, but I'm going to lift up one that is alive and well today. I'm going to honor those that has passed that I might have this freedom, but I'm going to glory in the one that's alive and well and in my Savior this morning. I'm going to glory in his death. I'm going to glory in his burial, but I'm going to shout for his resurrection this morning because I serve a living Savior. And he's in the world today. Hey, he's more than that. He's in my heart today. And I want to honor him. And I want to talk to you just for a moment about freedom, if I could at all. If you want a title, just simply this, Freedom. Freedom. I like the movie on the TV about uh, uh, William Wallace, the true account, uh, where he shouts the last when they're cutting his head off there as he fought for the freedom of Scotland. As his head's getting ready to be clipped off, the last word he hollers is freedom. I love that little part of that movie where he hollers freedom. I like freedom. Don't you like freedom? I like freedom to, to live the American dream. That's what we've been given, is it not? Your American dream is to be all you can be, to, to work and to have, and, and we're far more blessed. It's not being said today. We're blessed far more than what we could ever be thankful for. We can't even be thankful enough. We've been blessed that, that many ways. But I thought this morning, you know, there's a lot of things that ain't mentioned. Today is Memorial Day weekend. Tomorrow, Memorial Day. It used to be always the 30th of May, and they changed it to the last Monday of May. In 1971, they changed it to the last Monday of May. And what you think about that? You know, no one ever speaks of the civilians that was killed. I done a little bit of reading last night and just had the thought. And, and you know, just in World War II alone, we're not going to give you a history lesson, just give you a thought, okay? You know that there was 30 million civilians killed in World War II alone? There was more civilians killed 
than they were military people. Did you know that? They was more civilians killed in World War II than they were military people. And you know, I never found the name of one. Now, I'm not going to do, uh, uh, disrespect the soldiers. Their name is there. But you know, they died for freedom. Right? That's why we honor them. Right. But these other, others perished needy. These others perished needy freedom. So when I look at that, I see, if I relate this spiritually, I see many that are free. But I see many that's dying needing freedom. Right. Freedom in a different way. Freedom in a whole different aspect, a whole different mindset, if you will. See, I got to reading last night. I spent several hours here at the church last night studying and reading. And those that's thrown in the middle of war. You know, I'm, I am a history buff. I like all the war movies and everything. And I like the war books. And, and you know, I thought of when Hitler, for example, invaded Europe from Germany. His place wasn't enough. He wanted it all. So he started invading countries. And when he went and took and ravished the people, you know, they were innocent. They didn't ask for none of that. They were kind of thrown in the middle, if you would. And what they become was the victim. They become victim of a, of a war that they themselves had not started. Are you listening to me? They only were not innocent in a, in a way, but they were... They were invalid then. And they were crippled, tortured, uh, everything taken. Their food was taken. Their children was taken. Their young men were forced to fight. and Some of them were just kids. I was reading there just in, in uh, the Korean War, just in South Korea, they were 39,000 <coughs> assassinations of South Korean civilians. This in the Korean War. 39,000 assassinations. Well, that, does that rest in your mind? 30 million in World War II civilians that perished? We think the act of war is, is bad, but I look at the country, I, I thought as I drove to church this morning and we passed traffic was heavier than I thought it would be this morning. When people would pass me, I noticed they never had church clothes on. Some were traveling back home. Some were traveling to a vacation, and that's all well and fine. We're not against that. No way. But I wondered how many were traveling, running from something. I wondered how many was traveling, trying to find a little bit of happiness or a little bit of joy. I wondered how many was trying to find peace from the war that was going on inside their mind, inside their heart. Yeah. I look at this church house this morning and everyone does not smile. Right. Everyone does not have it made. Right. Everyone is not free, though we're free. You understand? Just because someone smiles does not mean they're having a good day. I smile all the time, or try to. It takes less effort. And I'm a little on the lazy side. It takes less effort to smile because i got to concentrate on how I draw my face in. So just because you smile don't mean that you're happy. Sometimes it's just easier to smile. Than you. But I think of the things that come on my life that I've been thrown into. I'm not... Ask for some of my troubles. I'm not asking. Now, some of the things I made bad choices and caused them to come, just like you, but some of the things that come in your life you never asked for. You know, I never asked to be born a sinner. Right, right. I never asked to be born a sinner. I never asked to be born needing God. I was kind of thrown in the middle of this thing because of someone else. Right. Are you listening to me? I didn't ask to be born with a hole in my heart. 
to where the only thing that would fill it was Jesus. I wouldn't ask that. But boy, I'm glad I know that there's somebody can fill that void. But you understand, I was thrown into some things that I was not wanting to happen or never would have planned to happen. Just like war. Boy, I'm glad for freedom, folks. Yes, yes. I'm glad for freedom. I'm glad when I rose this morning, I didn't look out there on the street. There weren't nobody at the end of my road with a gun right, directing me where I needed to go. When I come into town, there was not a checkpoint and a roadblock where I had to hand them my papers. It ain't happened yet. It may yet, but it ain't happened yet. See, I was free. I was free. But then Mickey sung her a while ago, how deep is the Father's love? Right. Then he's talking about that amazing grace. And boy, I'm free in another way this morning. I'm glad for that freedom today. Yeah. I'm glad for that freedom. Yeah. Boy, there's some war going on. Yeah. See, the, the, the th people that's thrown in the war, the innocent and the invaded, if you would, they're starved. I read about civilians that were starved, mutilated, tortured, above major, killed, beheaded, families killed. Just the Jewish people, they, they have even found out that there was more of the Jews killed. They were just on the news here just a couple months ago, a month ago, there was more Jews killed than what was on record. They found more graves. They really don't know how many more thousands of Jews was killed by Hitler. Don't have to have a clue. More. Much more. And that blows my mind to know just because they were Jewish. Now stay with me this morning. I don't want you to lose interest. Listen to me. See, there were the people that stood in the war. And then there's tragedies of war, just to say. Not just people float in, but the tragedies that all come. I thought of those that the Richardson family used to come and sing when I was a kid, come to church at Cotton Hill and up in Hinton. And uh, Miss Richardson was an Italian. She was right straight from Italy. She didn't talk good English, but she got happy she didn't talk English at all. She shouted in Italian. <laughs> Her and Papa, Paul would be shouting in American and she's shouting in Italian. She'd get all worked up, you know. She could sing. Oh, I'd sit to her on the back of your neck. She'd sing the praises of God. She would tell about watching her mommy and daddy being hung by Mussolini. And as they were hung, then they would go across them and shoot them with the machine gun. That's what she would tell. And as a kid, she watched that and she married her husband, a soldier. Come to America, got saved. And shouted the house down boy, when she comes to the church. Yeah. Tragedies of war is what I'm trying to show you. There's tragedies. Then I look around and I see there's tragedies of this war. There's tragedies of the war, the warfare that's in your mind. Whether you admit it or not, this morning you have a battle you fight every day. Some fight a battle to get up. Some fight a battle to go on. Some fight a battle till they get to their medicine cabinet to get the medicine that is necessary for them to function. Sad but true, some have to have some medicines to function. There are some, now I know that a lot of things may be unnecessary, but there are some that has to have professional counseling to make a good cool week. There's some that's fighting battles that some of us don't have a clue because we've never fought them. And I look at these fightings this morning. Freedom is what I want to preach to you about this morning, but we can't talk about freedom until we see those that's thrown in the war and then until we see the tragedies of war. See, this morning I can't help but think of those that's depressed today. I fight depression. I have a big problem with depression. I've had to have help, professional help, because of depression. You may think it's not necessary, but you've never been where I'm at. Right, right, right. Are you hearing me? Until you walk in my shoes, be careful. Be careful. 
Some of you are depressed to say. Some of you are fighting that battle of depression. Some fight the battle of discouragement. There's many under the sound of my voice this morning that rise up and wonder why they even exist. They're so discouraged. Why am I here? Look at my life. Look at what's going on in my life. They don't have a will to live. There's many probably even here this morning. There's days you don't even have a will to live. That's the tragedies of this war. The tragedies of this war. I thought not only discouragements and depressions. I see Christian people unhappy. Unhappy. Are you unhappy? Why are you unhappy today? How can a people that's been so blessed be so unhappy? It's not because we want it. It's not because we've chosen it. But we've been thrown into war, if you would. And the tragedies of war is a depressed and discouraged spirit. An unhappy attitude. It happens. Brother Rick taught Sunday school and talked about how we complain. How could a man complain that had a homemade apple pie for breakfast? <laughs> Cow's milk and coffee. That ought to be enough to make anybody walk on top of the water, you know? <laughs> but you, you yourself said you complained before you got to the church house. Huh? I put my coffee pot on the stove and boiled my coffee this morning, poured a good fresh cup, smelled the whole house up. Boy, it was fragrant in the kitchen. <laughs> Took a good gulp of hot coffee, huh? Cracker Barrel coffee. Tasted good. And I complained before I got in the truck. Huh? Oh, nothing. Right, right. Just unhappy. Right. Just unhappy. Battles that we fight. And you this morning fight these same battles. I can see it on your face. Right. I watched you as you walked in the church house. You ever wonder why I'm outside when you come to church? To look at you. <laughs> so many, we come in, our heads are down. <coughs> they are. It's not because you're just evil. It's because you're fighting a battle this morning. Right. And the load is heavy. And you can't lift your head up. But your head is down because of the unhappiness and the discouragements and the depression in your life. It's the war. And it's not a fleshly war. But it's a war, a spiritual war. And it's not flesh and blood. But it's powers and principalities right. and these things in high places that we fight. It's not fleshly. It's spiritual. Right. 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 I understand. I understand. Then there's battles that we fight that maybe we've asked for. There's fornications that we get involved in. Idolatry. Been thinking about idolatry. We live in such a time that everybody wants to make God out how they want it. That's right. You want God, you, you already got in your mind a fixed way God's supposed to be. Do you know what? That's idolatry. If you make God any other way, what this book says He is, it becomes <laughs> idolatry. Your God becomes a false God. That's right. It's got to be the God of this book. Right. The way this book describes Him and the way He is. But we make God different in our life. And it's there. It's there. We have the fornications and idolatry. They're listed there in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Adulteries. We know they're here. We know they're around. There's as much adultery in the church house as the already bear joint. Huh? There is. It's true. 
Much fornication and idolatry in the church house. They are down at the pool hall, down at the beer joiner, in an atheist club. Okay. Infeminate, sissy men. <laughs> what they mean? Yeah. We're living in a day of sissy men, <laughs> sissy boys. Hmm. We are soft. No calluses. No calluses because of no work. That's why there's no calluses. Huh? You don't have to have dirty hands and show that you're a worker, but you ought to have calloused hands. Huh? But we're soft today. Then, of course, we have the abusers of themselves with mankind, the sodomites. Yeah. That's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Are you hearing me today? I'm not condemning. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Sodomites, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's bad until it gets in your home. When it gets in your home, it's acceptable. If it ain't in your home, it's awful. But you have a more understanding spirit, but you don't know it's never understanding. It's all sin. Yeah. This fornication and idolatry and adultery is and famine and abuse and self of mankind. Thieves, they're seeing them. Where's a bunch of thieves here? Will a man rob God? We steal from God. Do we not? Huh? Covetous. Covetous. Are you covetous? Do you want what somebody else has? Is there anything somebody else has you would like to have? Do you want it? You don't want one like it, you want it. Huh? I sold my horses, my horses, and uh, I'm doing good till Lindsay sent me a picture of a horse. <laughs> my wonderful daughter-in-law sent me a picture of, of my green horses, the buckskin. I don't care what, whether it's a walker or a, or a quarter horse, it's a bucks. I like a Matt Dillon's horse. That's my horse. That's what I want. Or Lauren Green. Ben Cartwright's horse. That's my, been my favorite. Everybody understand that? She sent me a picture of one. Now all I want to do is look at horses. Kill them. She's killing me. She's killing me. But I ain't wanting one like nobody else has. I've looked at the ones I want that have belonged to somebody else, and I'm not going to pay thousands of dollars for them. And I looked at them. I've been covetous this week. Sinful. I was trying to study, and I got on the computer and just sit there and looked at the horses. <laughs> I don't just any horses. I, I typed in the certain horse I wanted, and I seen them, and I coveted them. I wanted, I want that horse. And I looked and I said, that's $10,000. I ain't want that horse. <laughs> I looked for them $200 horses, free horses, you know. <laughs> you can't get the kind you want. It's always an expensive one. Well, when you understand, there's covetous everywhere, and that is battles I fight. I'm a preacher. I fight them because I know you fight them as well. Yeah. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you this morning? Drunkards. There's drunkards in the church house. Right. If you drink, you're a drunk. Yeah. I'm sorry. If you steal, you're a thief. Yeah. If you lie, you're a liar. Yeah. So if you drink, you're drunk. I mean, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> what are you not doing? What's that just... The way English language is. Okay? That's what the Bible says. All right? We all right? Yeah. Revelers. Hey. Go ahead, hey, hateful people like that. Huh? I wonder, are you ever hateful? Huh? I got some honest ones. They raise their hand. Huh? Rest of you is a lie. <laughs> Are you just the one I'm telling you this morning? I'm telling you about the tragedies of war. The tragedies of the warfare we fight is depression and discouragement and unhappiness and, and unforgiving. Unforgiveness, if you would. Huh? Fornications and idolatries, idolatries. Impairment, abusing of themselves of mankind, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revelers, extortioners. <coughs> they were the tragedies of war. Are you listening to me? The 
the tragedies of war. It's so bad. But then I couldn't help but think I looked at the tally. Not just the ones thrown in and not just the tragedies, but I, I looked at the tally of the military and I seen the names. I seen the name. I looked at them military and I looked at their names of all from all states and I looked at all the white crosses. In the cemeteries, the military cemeteries in Arlington and in France and all those places. And I said, but where are the names of them? We'll start right here in the middle. Go up every aisle. I want you to look at the pictures of the people I found. Go slow. These are the pictures. Look at them. These are the pictures of the tragedies of war. Look at them. Do you see the pictures? Did you see who it is? Yeah. Their names ain't wrote down on this earth. But I found pictures of them. I found pictures of all of them. I found them. I found them this morning. Are you looking? I'm talking about those that's thrown in the war. Huh? Look at the pictures. Those that's thrown in the war. Make sure you show both sides, Wes and Lynch. Show both sides. I want everybody to see. You see them? See, I didn't have enough paper to write your name down, but I had a picture of you. These are the tragedies of war. <clears throat> These is the tally. That's the tally. That's the names. Your name. When you get done, you set them right here at the front, lean them up again in the communion table. I want you to look at the pictures. I want you to see the picture. I want you to look at the one that's in need this morning. The 30 million that civilians that died in World War II are not mentioned. I couldn't find one name mentioned. But I look at the ones that's in the warfare this morning and are tragedies of this warfare, tragedy of depression, tragedy of discouragement, tragedy of unhappiness, tragedy, if you will, of unforgiveness, tragedy of the fornications and adulteries and idolatries and the thievery and the infeminate and the abuse of himself of mankind and the thief, everything that we mentioned. I see the tragedies here this morning. The tally is great and we'll look next Sunday in the bulletin and we'll find the, the tally of them all. Are you with me now? Are you following me? But I wonder why them names ain't mentioned. I wonder why it'll just be as a group. Next Sunday, Brother Rick will have in the bulletin 200 and something of the tally for the tragedies on the 26th day of May, 2013. There'll be no names right there. There'll be no names right there. But there is one name written. There's names written on the walls of at the Vietnam Memorial of those who brought freedom. There's names up here on 79 at the rest areas of the men that brought freedom. There's, rest, there's names on a, on a monument over Princeton of men that brought freedom. There's names down in Charleston on the walls at the Capitol of men that brought freedom to those that were oppressed. But they all died. But let me give you the name of one that brings freedom yeah. right. to the oppressed I'm looking at this morning. Right. For there's one and his name is Jesus right. this morning. Right. And he is the one that gives freedom to each and every individual right, right here today. Right. And he frees you, if you would, yeah. from the depressions in your life. And he frees you from the discouragements. And he frees you from the unhappiness. And he freezes you from the unforgiveness this morning. And he'll free you from the fornications and idolatry and the idolatries. And he'll free you from the impediment and the abusers of themselves with mankind. He'll free 
free you from the thievery, from the drunkenness. He'll free you from the extortions and from the revelings. Well, when you understand this morning, there is one on the monument this morning. It's not written on a wall, but it was hung on an old rugged cross this morning. And Jesus, God's only Son, died in our place. And I'm going to remember the one who brings the most freedom today. That's Jesus Christ this morning. And I'll bring you freedom for everything that has you held bondage today. For everything that's got you tied up for days one this morning and hung and bled and died. He was wounded for our transgressions. His strength we're healed by. He died in mine in your place this morning. And he was a martyr. No, he was a sacrifice for our sin this morning. But that's not what happened really. He died a birdie. But he lives today. And he's the one that said, I'll come to you myself. Yep. And I'll free you from whatever's going on in your life today. Yep. That's the one I want to talk about this morning is freedom. See, I looked, tried my best to show you just a simple thought, if I could, about those thrown in the middle of the war. That the tragedies of the war, the tally of the war. Ah, but the true casualty, the one that took it all. I read about Audie Murphy and all these decorations. Found out that he is not the most decorated soldier in World War II. The man Urban is. They got his awards to him later. He is the most decorated. I read about Sergeant York went home and watched it last night after midnight. Watched Alvin C. York. Yeah. Gary Cooper. Yeah. Uh, one of my heroes. <laughs> they were all good. They were all good. I hate him. Read a little bit about a man. He went to an island that I've been on. There to try to free the oppressed. And they beat him down. They run him off, if you would. I knew what he said. I, I read about old Douglas MacArthur, the American of America, who said there's no substitute for victory. He said, I will return. And he did. And he freed him. I want you to know something this morning. They was a general better than MacArthur and left heaven glory. Huh? And when he died on the cross and he was buried and rose again, he ascended up and he hollered back and said, don't you fear. Don't you fret. I'm coming back. I'm going to return. He's going to come back. And then you talk about freedom. Hallelujah. It'll be freedom like you never know this Morning. It's not going to be freedom from a little bit of circumstance down here, but it's freedom from everything that goes on in this old sin cursed world. It's heaven looking on this morning when he comes again. I wonder this morning, do you need freedom? Do you need freedom? I like freedom. I like freedom of the Holy Ghost of God. Holy. Liberty where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. Hallelujah, they delivered to here this morning. Ah. I like the freedom he spoke to my heart. I like the freedom he speaks to my heart laying there at the house. The days I had when the world has caved in on me. And I fight them old demons from the past and fight them old demons on the inside. Oh, and the still small voice that comes in. And it wrap me around and say, you can be free, boy. You can be free. You can be free. I bask in the freedom of Jesus Christ today. I wonder you need freed you hurt You hurt today. Your tragedy of the wars and sin. You're fighting battles in your mind. Hiding in battles in your heart or your walls without God. Oh, do you need Him this morning? Do you know that if you die, you go to hell and not heaven? Oh, you can be free today. For that old enemy has come and invaded your life. And he's wrapped you around and taken everything you got from you this morning. 
There's blood on the way. Oh, he's here this morning. Won't you let him free you today? Would you let him free you today? Huh? How about you bow your head for just a minute? Everybody. Now I wonder. I wonder how many be honest enough to say, Mark, boy, I'm in bondage this morning. I'm a casualty. I'm a tragedy of this war. I wonder if you'd be honest enough to lift your hands after me, preacher. I'm going through it. Huh? You got to lift your hand. Come on, hold them up. Oh, find your place. Put you around this altar. Come on, right now. 